Hey internet, before the video gets started, I just wanted to take a minute here and check in with you, let you know the annotations that are appearing on your screen right now are here because the video is so damn long. Uh, if you want to skip ahead, if, if for instance you're watching this video for the second time because you gave up on it and you want to skip ahead, use these annotations below to do that. The first annotation will take you to the beginning of the actual combat, past the introduction, the beginning of the game versus the computer. The second annotation will take you to the actual unit versus unit combat section of the video and the third will take you to my closing thoughts so that is provided here so that if you kind of think oh this video is 25 minutes long I don't want to watch it all you don't have to you can just come back later and utilize these annotations below to get where you're going all right I'm gonna turn you over to me and I hope you enjoy Guardians of Graxia as it was very requested Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and I am cheap. How cheap? Well, I'm so cheap that I paid about five bucks for Guardians of Graxia and its expansion, Elves and Dwarves. Now, Internet, if I sound a little bit, I don't know, happy or sort of giddy, the reason for that is... I'm in that sort of euphoric state that happens to a person after they've tried to do something once, twice, thrice, and failed, and they're taking one last stab at it, and they're just convinced that it's not going to work, so they've just sort of lost all hope, and they're, they're sort of letting go. It's almost like being drunk. You just kind of let go. You don't care. The uh, fact of the matter is I've done a video for Guardian of Graxia about five times now, and every single time... I just can't do it. It's This game is so dense. Trying to explain the systems of this game is absolutely mind-numbing. And I've just given up hope that this is going to work. So if you're listening to this, joy, because it means that I actually completed this video. If you're not listening to this, well, you're not listening to this. So let's try this one more time. Guardians of Graxia comes to us from Petroglyph. Petroglyph is a bunch of the old guys from Westwood Studios. Westwood Studios, makers of Command & Conquer, one of my all-time favorite RTSs. Also makers of my all-time favorite RTS, Dune. Oh my god, Dune. Oh, the spice must flow. Oh, I love that game. Dune, yeah. I'm having a memory gasm here. Oh, man. So, yeah, makers of Dune. Uh, these guys are into a lot of stuff. Uh, they are making, currently, uh, End of Nations. A lot of good buzz about End of Nations. They're teamed up with Tryon Worlds to create the, uh, the well, the first major MMO RTS. And it looks really promising. Lots of, lots of good press on that game. So, uh, big fingers crossed that that one will turn out very, very good. They also more recently released... Rise of the Immortals, you Steam players will know that as the free-to-play uh, Dota clone, the MOBA-style game that came to uh, Steam late last year. Uh, they've done some other things, most notably I would say uh, Star Wars Empire at War, I believe is the name of it, which I played way back when, but uh, well, I don't say way back when, it was like five years ago, but uh, uh, it's basically a Star Wars RTS, so... You know, it wasn't a groundbreaking RTS, but it was a Star Wars RTS. And a lot of people will forgive uh, a game for not being as good as it can be if it's using an IP that they really like. And in this case, I think a lot of people kind of got that nostalgic feeling because it was set during the Episode 4, 5, and 6 era. And uh, a lot of people really enjoyed that game. So uh, Guardians of Graxia is actually based on a board game. Look at this button down here, Preview Board Games. Yes, it is in fact an actual board game. And I didn't know this when I first played the game. I found this out during my research, and as soon as I found that out, it just clicked. I was like, oh my god, that it, it feels like a board game. And it just explained so much. And uh, then I noticed this button at the bottom of the menu screen. Panzer General seems to use basically the same system, and Heroes of Graxia is a, uh, a, a completely different game. It is based in the same universe, the Graxia universe, uh, but it's more of a straight-up CCG, and uh, it's kind of like Savage and Heroes of New Earth. They're both set in New Earth, but one don't got nothing to do with the other, that sort of thing. So, uh, yes, this is, in fact, an actual board game. So, this game is, is literally Petroglyph's interpretation of their own board game. 
Mm-hmm. So in reading about this game, the major complaint, the absolute number one complaint, what do you see here? Better yet, what don't you see here? Multiplayer. Might it be under skirmish? No, it's just a bunch of random skirmishes. There's no multiplayer. The board game is designed to be played by two humans. The digital version of the board game is designed to be played by one human. That's absolutely heartbreaking. This game needs multiplayer. I would say that I honestly cannot in good conscience... Conscious? Conscience? Wow. <sighs> I would say that I cannot in good conscience recommend this game without it having multiplayer. It is fun, and I will show it to you, uh, but it's so hard to, to thumbs this game up at full price, $10, with no multiplayer. If you can catch it on sale, maybe that's a determination that you'll make, but oh, if they would patch multiplayer into this game, I would play this game online, but they haven't. So, here we go. I'm really going to sort of avoid a lot of explanation, because every single time I've tried to make this video and failed, it's been because I've gotten bogged down in explanation. This is your screen here for the campaign. You can learn how you can you can uh, win or lose the game right here. A convenient little map, a very nice feature, gives you an idea of where you need to go. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. A little bit of story here, you know, there's a, a sort of a loose storyline tying this all together. But let's go, let's start ourselves a mission. Uh, the art style on this stuff's a little bit of a throwback. It, this really looks like it was these look like the illustrations for an RPG book. You know, for, for the handbook of an RPG, for the player's guide and the dungeon master's guide and stuff. So, you know, it's not the most impressive, but I really, I, I like the style. It goes well with the game itself. Uh, and then the style is delivered uh, through the 3D models. So it, it all works out. You know, the card style, the 3D models, everything looks nice and goes together. So here's your, uh, your playing field, your field of battle, if you will. And uh, this is going to be very reminiscent to uh, to players of, of Heroes of Might and Magic. It's going to seem kind of like that. Uh, in the end, I don't really get this 100% uh, of a Might and Magic vibe from it. Uh, I really feel a little bit more of a, of a Final Fantasy Tactics kind of vibe. So there are three main mechanics in this game that I'll quickly explain to you. Number one is the collectible card game aspect of it. Your cards are going to go down here. You use your cards to cast units and spells. The next is the turn-based strategy. So that's what's going to happen here on the field of play. You're going to have uh, alternating turns with your opponent in order to position your units to cast your spells, so forth and so on. And then finally, when your units actually engage in combat, there is a turn-based combat system. So these three mechanics all work together to create the gameplay of Guardians of Graxia. So uh, let's go ahead and get things started. First thing we need to do is put our hero on the field. So here we go. Once our hero is on the field, we get our initial draw of unit cards. So on the beginning of the, this first initial turn, or really this is prior to the first turn, uh, but as we start the game, we have a little bit of mana. Here's our mana. You can say mana if you want. I won't make fun of you if you if you want to. You know, I'm not going to make fun of you there. Uh, here's your, your mana up here. Here's your opponent's mana. Our opponent is goblins. Uh, so uh, here's your mana, and uh, here is where you find the mana cost on your cards. Mm -hmm. So I have enough mana to cost to cast to cost. I have enough mana to cost any one card. I have enough mana to cost cast any one of these cards. So I'm just going to start with casting the most expensive. Uh, because it's going to bring me up to 30 mana no matter what I cast. So we'll start out with my soldier man right here. And there he goes. So now we are into our first turn. I get my full draw of cards. And this is the command phase. So players of games like Magic will be familiar with the phase system. Um, it doesn't work quite like Magic because there's not a set number of phases that you go through. There's the command phase. And then the command phase can cause the battle phase, but you don't necessarily have to have a battle phase. Uh, I guess that is kind of like magic in one, you know, in magic you have an attack phase, but you don't have to attack. So it's similar, but technically in magic the attack phase can occurs whether you attack or never mind. 
So yeah, let's cast some peoples. So uh, this portion, it's uh, this little doodad over here, very useful, kind of telling me the stuff I can do. What can I do? Well, this is the stuff I can do. I can summon units, as it's encouraging me to do here. And I will definitely be summoning me some units, but uh, before I do that, I want to use my commander's special ability. He has a special ability down here on his card, and this is where you access all of the abilities for your uh, individual characters, that you uh, units and, and your commander. And uh, what he can actually do is he can cast a unit behind him um, for seven less mana. So uh, even though this isn't behind me, I can cast a unit over here on this uh, territory. So I'm going to use that to cast my most expensive unit, which is that nine mana soldier man. So there he goes. And it only costs me two mana. Lovely. So uh, yeah, let's cast the rest of our little army here. Uh, the Wisp is interesting. He can move very fast. All these units can only move one tile per turn. He can move up to three, but he can't claim any territories. You see here these yellow uh, marks under my men. When I enter a territory, I claim it. When I claim a territory, I own it. When I own it, I get the mana that is uh, noted here. So for holding a plains, I'm going to get one. So for instance, holding this forest, I'm going to get two mana. For holding this, I'm going to get four mana, and so forth and so on. So this is your sort of resource system. If you played Magic, you would put your lands down. Well, instead of putting your lands down, you literally claim them here. So uh, he can't claim anything, but he can move very quickly. So uh, let's also cast our lovely archer. And there she is. So now I've cast all of the units that I can cast. I have about 14 mana left, and uh, pretty much nothing else I can do. Um, these uh, these all require either m uh, a different phase, like the battle phase, or they require something that I cannot yet uh, do. So, for instance, this one can't be cast on turn one. It's turn one. So there you go. <laughs> so uh, I have nothing I can cast, essentially. So in that case, let's just end this turn. There we go. Oh, wait, hang on. I can move this guy. I forgot about that. I'm going to move him... Here, because again, moving him means claiming. Claiming means mana. There we go. Now we will end our turn. I could have also moved my commander, but I chose not to. And now it's Goblins' turn. And he's going to now do his thing. He's going to move his men. He's going to draw his cards, etc., etc. He's going to do everything that I'm doing. He is a player just as me. Now at the end of your turn... Anybody who didn't perform one of their card actions will shield themselves. You saw those little boom, boom, boom shields? That's what that is. Uh, so now it's going to be the beginning of turn number two. At the beginning of the turn, I get to draw my cards. If I had any units in my unit deck, I could split my draw between these two decks. But since I don't, I'm going to draw all four cards from this deck. There you go. If I desire more cards up to my maximum hand size of 12, I can pay mana to draw more cards. I don't, however, desire more cards. So now it is my turn number two, and uh, luckily enough, that means I can cast this spell, so that's what I'm going to do. Now these guys are shielded, which means that they are going to absorb damage um, from from any anything that occurs during the command phase. So this is a direct damage spell that I've cast, and it has an AoE effect that will hit people around it. Uh, so you'll notice here, this catapult is in a city, which means that it can absorb one damage, and it has a shield, which means that it can absorb two damage. My spell does three damage, meaning it will do zero damage. This guy can absorb two damage. The AoE effect of my spell does two damage. So if I target this guy, I'll do zero damage to him and zero damage to him, but I'll remove both of their shields. And this is when you start to get into the strategy of the game. What I'm going to do, however, is just hit this guy because I can at least do one damage to him. There you go. I dropped a giant rock on his head. So now I get to do the rest of my uh, turn actions. That means I can move people around. I can, uh, I could initiate combat if I was close enough, uh, but I'm not. Uh, one thing that I can do, however, is shoot my magic bow. And I can shoot that right at this guy. Now this guy has no shield because my original uh, attack, my meteor, took off his shield He's now vulnerable to this attack. So we're going to shoot him with an arrow. 
So we're just working him down, just working him down. And uh, this is pretty much the game. This is how it goes. This is what happens. This is Guardians of Graxia. So uh, you're going to continue to strategize and to try to beat your opponent. Again, I got nothing else left. The only thing I can do is uh, move my man around. Um, one one thing this guy can do actually that I'll sh that I, I guess I'll show you he can make portals and um, he can place little portals uh, pretty much zoom those cards up uh, pretty much wherever he wants you know place a little portal and um, if I place another portal I can then go through that portal for faster transport uh, the portal does do two damage to you so there is a downside to using the portal um, but what the hell you know, just to show you guys what's going on, I have elected to place the portal. So yeah, so if I place this other portal, let's say, um, here, yeah, now I can bounce back and forth between the two sides of the map without much problem. There you go, nice and easy. So, um, that is going to do it, because nobody else has any ability that I can use except for this man who I could, uh, hell, let's, let's uh, throw him out here to the wolves or more appropriately to the wolf riders so uh, yeah my, my wisp is gonna very slowly wisp out here <laughs> and uh, he is now amongst all of the enemies poor guy and uh, yeah that's it so we'll end that turn and now it will become goblins turn again calculating my mana gain there and uh, if I should choose I can buy a card this is very often useful if you uh, know you're gonna be attacked and you want to kind of bolster your defenses. I, however, do not. And it is Goblins' turn. So the last thing I want to show you guys is combat. So I'm kind of hoping that uh, he'll attack me. Um, this is a an ability, not an actual combat attack. So he hit me pretty hard with his boulder. But unfortunately, he also damaged his own guys, which happens very frequently. There's a lot of adjacent damage that occurs in this game. Okay. So these guys are moving up, and it looks like, yes, indeed, they're going to attack. So um, my archer, unfortunately, a little bit overextended, kind of uh, left hanging out there. Now, when you're the defender, the main purpose of combat is not to die. And uh, there's a lot of math stuff here, and there's calculations and all this stuff. All you need to worry about is your battle uh, rating, I think it's called. Let's see. Your battle value. So... My battle value means that I can do 3 damage. His battle value means that he can do 7 damage. So I got to do something to either increase my battle value so I can kill him as well, or reduce his battle value so he doesn't kill me. Now we're in the initial turn of the uh, combat, and that's a time to play battle abilities or spells, or pass. When both people pass, the turn proceeds on. The combat turn proceeds to the next phase. So uh, I got to do something because I'm going to lose this archer. So let's see what I've got at hand. I've got a heal spell. Well, that's pretty good. I've got a oh, this is nice. An orb of Orlock that I can use to reduce his battle value by by six. Wow. Okay. So let's do that. I'm going to reduce his battle value by six, which means now, glory, I will live. He responded to that by increasing his battle value by five. So he got his battle value back up high enough to still kill me. So I'm going to reduce his battle value by six again. Will he respond? Yes, he does, by once again increasing his battle value by five. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm still going to die. So uh, this card, Mana Surge, it, uh, if I'm using a magical attack, it gives me the ability to increase my battle damage by f my battle value by five. Uh, the way to know whether you're using magical or physical attacks is to look right here on your character's card. This is a magical unit. Also, these would be grayed out if you couldn't use them. So, uh, this is a magical unit, so I'm going to bolster my battle value by five. What will he do in response? He will pass. Okay, so he still has one life, and I really want to kill this bastard. So, I'm going to bolster my battle value by five. And here we go. Now, I'm going to kill him. Or am I? Now I'm going to pass automatically because I'm out of mana. And we move on to the next phase. Now we're in the sacrifice phase. In the sacrifice phase, you can sacrifice a card to do one last increase or decrease to your uh, your battle rate. Increase your battle rate, uh, battle value, or decrease the opponent's. 
And the way you do that is by sacrificing one of your cards. The value of the sacrifice is down here in the low corner. Now you can sort of fake out your opponent, I guess, by not sacrificing. Not really sure the point of that. But this card is great. It's Banner of the Brave, and it's only here to be sacrificed. So it doesn't have a lot of value in my command phase, but it's right here, and it's going to bolster me up big time for my attack. He's going to get to sacrifice a card too. So the question becomes, increase or decrease? Do I increase my own battle value by 8, or do I decrease his by 8? You can see the benefits here. And it comes down to the question of, what do I think my opponent did? Now, if my opponent is increasing his own battle value, he's going to kill me, because I'm already at 0. So should I then decrease it? Well, no, because if he increases it by 8, and I decrease it by 8, there's no change. No change means me dead. And so forth and so on goes the strategy. So you got to think this out for yourself. You've got to figure out what you're going to do. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to put it out there. I'm just going to throw it out, and I'm going to put 8 battle damage, 8 battle value on myself. There we go. Oh, he only added three to himself, so he is going to kill me, but I'm going to kill him as well. He had a lesser card that he sacrificed. So we both kill one another, and uh, he dies in a blaze of glory. These little guys have a last, like, last stand sacrifice ability. So there we go. Even though my, uh, my archer was fairly outclassed, uh, she actually managed through the manipulation of the cards and the systems of the game to kill that guy. And now I can redraw her. Lovely. And I can go ahead and grab my three additional spells. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's Guardians of Graxia. Um, I'm going to continue playing the game. Um, and I'm going to take a couple of minutes to talk to you guys about, about how I feel about this game. There's no way I can explain to you the rest of the systems of this game, how it works, um, how you play. It's just, it's just too much. I feel like that's enough of an overview of how the game functions to kind of get you guys... Uh, started and uh, I'll tell I'll talk to you now about uh, sort of how I feel about the game uh, my thoughts after playing up to about scenario number three and uh, some of the things I've seen with the game what I like what I don't like that sort of thing so uh, let's just take a couple of minutes here I will continue to play out this scenario and you guys can uh, watch on and listen to my uh, opinion about Guardians of Grexia Let's wind down here with a quick final thought. If you guys have actually stayed with me for this long, oh my god, thank you so much. But uh, let's end things quickly for you. Final thoughts on this game. I think it is an interesting concept that is in the end not executed completely. It is a flawed game that just doesn't ever quite find its stride. Um, and this is one of the first games I think I've ever had to sort of pan in this nature. You know, I, uh, I, if, I, if I was still using the old buck system, I would have to give this game a 1 out of 5. It's not that it's a bad game. It's just that it is so tedious to play. The turns take forever when you get multiple units on the field. You know, there was a scenario where I had a dozen units on the field, and my enemy had a dozen units on the field. And just for me to get through a turn, if it was combat in a turn, a turn took 20 minutes to get through. And I'm just not looking for that. Um, that's not what I'm looking for out of a game. Now, if this was a the physical board game, I might consider that. Because when I said uh, earlier in the video, once I found out this game was a physical board game, based on a physical board game, it made more sense. Yeah, I really meant it. This game's concept makes sense as a board game, and I, I probably would give it a try as a physical board game. I would also be willing to give it a try as a, an actual online multiplayer card game RTS turn-based thing. But as a single-player experience, it's just not that fulfilling. Maybe if it had an interesting storyline, you know, with, with voice acting. I mean, the entire tutorial is text. There's just not a lot going on in this game. Um, it really feels like a bare-bones port of a board game to me. Uh, I, I, I applaud their attempt to go out on a limb and, and do something different. 
uh, combining all of these different elements together, but I think ultimately this game suffers from its hybridization. Uh, you know, much like my Shaman in World of Warcraft, it's never going to top the healing charts, it's never going to top the DPS charts. Uh, it is always going to kind of hang out there in the middle. It's always going to fail uh, up against a pure whatever. You know, up against a pure CCG, this game is not as good. Up against a pure tactics-based RPG, this game is not as good and not as fully realized. So it's it's an interesting concept that it just, in the end, it's never fully realized. I really enjoyed Guardians of Graxia for about the first two or three hours that I played it. After that, the game unfortunately became tedious. Um, I'm not disrecommending this game. I'm not not recommending it, but I'm saying know what you're getting. Uh, know that you are getting a very time-consuming, very thought-provoking, very structured, very dense, turn-based, card game-based combat experience. It, it is not a fast pick-it-up-and-go game. There's a learning curve, and then on top of that, there's the time that each individual game can take to play. So, thank you guys again for sticking out. This is probably the longest video I've ever made, and uh, I really apologize for the length of this. I thought about splitting into two parts, but there's nowhere to really split it. So, uh, yeah. <sighs> I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.